Hello, it's AC Blender Tutorials, and in this video we're going to be looking at drivers. So I have my default scene, and we're going to be moving this cube with a controller. So first I will add an armature that I will be using to control the cube. In the armature settings, I will turn on X-ray so we can see it more easily. And let me edit the bone, and I'll just make it bigger so it's easier to see. But if you go to pose mode, you'll see that in the coordinate system, for local coordinates. The bones coordinate system does not line up with the worlds, so I'm going to change that just so that it's easier to work with, more predictable. So let me change this. So let's move it down. And now the axes are the same. Now I'll need to parent the cube to the bone. So now I move the bone, the cube moves, moves, the cube moves with it. Now I'll need a controller bone. So I'm going to create a controller so that I move the controller in the x direction, the cube will go up and down. So, if I put the bone inside of this armature, it won't work out that well. It'll be a little glitchy. I'm going to do that just so you can see what I mean. So let me duplicate the bone, move it over here. Let me make it smaller so we can easily tell the difference. I will name this bone cleverly the controller, and then I will name this bone cube. So I go into pose mode, you can see that they're not linked in any way. I don't even have a parenting relationship between the two of them. I'm going to right click on the control bone or on the cube bone again in pose mode so I can select different bones. I'm going to go into the Z location, right click on it, go to add driver. I'm going to choose manually uh, choose later for the single. If I choose the non-single, then what that's going to do is it's going to let me control all three of these values. I only want to control one right now. So now I have added a driver. We don't see anything here. If we go into the graph editor and change it to drivers, now you can see the driver. Now you might not see the driver. If you're not selecting the bone that the driver is on, or the object the driver is on, then it won't appear in the drivers panel if this is checked. What this does, it limits the driver shown to the selected objects. But if you uncheck this, you'll see all the drivers inside your scene. So I'll select my driver. I'll expand the end panel. You can use this plus or the uh, in button. So now I have my driver panel open. If I adjust this window, you can see that it defaulted to two keys on my graph editor. And you can select them and see it here. These are Bezier interpolations. I don't want that interpolation. I want linear for now because we're going to create a linear relationship between the control bone and the bone that we're moving. So inside, back to my driver. This is the actual information on the driver. So what we do have is a list of variables, and you can add variables. There's different types of variables that you can use. So what I'm going to do is just leave it with this one. The transformation channel is exactly what we want. So select the object. It was the armature, and it was the cube bone. And uh, or not the cube bone, the controller bone. The controller bone is the variable that we want for moving the cube. And we want the x location. And the space, we're going to be using the local space. So now what we can do is have to map these values. Uh, the scripted expression is one way of doing that. This is used Python. It only works when you have auto script run enabled. So we'll set this to anything else. It doesn't matter since we only have one variable. And this basically shows how the variables here will be mapped to first our graph editor or you can override the graph with modifiers. Like you could use a generator for an expanded polynomial for a linear function if you wanted to, where you have sine functions, not here, but here you have sine functions for the built in functions. You can stack them together. A lot of things you can do there, but for here, we're just going to be using the graph editor because it's simple. So we have these set to linear interpolation. So we'll go back to our F curves and we can set the point of where each one of these is located. The x-axis is the frame, or in this case, for drivers, it is the input value. The y-value is the output value of the driver. So for the key, we're going to have it be at 1 in the z-direction. Uh, no, our input 0 value one is 1. So what this will do is it will say that when our controller is in its rest position, along the x-axis, 
the Z location of this bone will be at 1. Now this is bad practice. Ideally you'd want this to be positioned where you want it at rest. I'm going to break a little bit just for the sake of showing this work. So then what we want is I'll set it so that when the controller is at 1, so when the controller is at 1, the value of my driver will be at, let's say, 3. So now this is the input value. The controller is 0. The output will be 1. When the input is 1, the output will be 3. So then let me show you what this does. So what this means is that when this is moved at 0 for the local space, the cube bone that's being driven is at 1. When I go to 1, the driven bone is at 3. So now I have a linear relationship between the driver uh, or between the driven bone and my controller or my driving bone. And then what you'd want to do is you could set up bone constraints to say limit the locations. So you could limit along the y and the z to stay at zero and then you can limit the x to go just between what you'd want and of course you'd want this in local space since that's what we're doing you would also want to do this for transformations. Now you probably noticed some glitching going on. See if I undo this, you can notice that this doesn't go back to where it should. And that's because we have a cyclic dependency. When you have a bone referencing in the same armature, it thinks that that is a cyclic dependency. It thinks that something's depending on itself. So it messes up the way it's calculated. It doesn't look at individual bones yet. That should be fixed in Blender 2.8, but as far as 2.79, it's still an issue. So we don't want this bone. I'm actually going to just go into edit mode and delete it. And now what I'm going to do is the driver's broken, but I'm going to add a new armature. And I'm actually going to call this armature the controller and then I will call this bone the control bone. I'll also go into edit mode to fix the positioning of this bone just like we did for the other one. So now I'll go back into pose mode. We have our bone. Actually I'm going to edit mode. I forgot to move it over so we can see it. So move it over here back into pose mode. I will add the constraints again, so we'll do a limit location, apply it to transformation as well, limit these to stay at zero, set this to local space. Okay, so now we have this bone positioned, and now we can fix this driver. So now I'll go back to the drivers, and I just have to change the value. So instead of armature, uh, oops, I only changed armature data, oh well. So I'll choose the armature.001, and then for the control, Instead of the bone, I'll choose the control bone. And all of this is set up the way I wanted it to from before. So now I go to the 3D view. You can see that when I move this, there's no lag between the two. And what this means is that you'd have to have your controller bones for drivers inside of a separate, separate armature, like a separate armature control panel, which is a huge hassle, but that's what we have to deal with right now with the way the Blender dependency graph is. Hopefully it'll work out better, and or it should be fixed in Blender 2.8. So I hope that you found this introduction to drivers useful. If you did, please like, subscribe, and share it with others so it may help them. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye.